Welcome again to Film Blade. In this new episode of Film Grasp, we will learn how to effectively create glitch effects within Premiere Pro. A common technique to achieve glitch effects is by making appropriate distortions on the intended video using a displacement map. But unlike After Effects, Premiere Pro isn't equipped with a displacement map effect. So today we will learn a workaround solution to achieve something similar without needing to switch to After Effects. So here you can see we've already arranged a quick little video sequence and had already graded these shots. Look at this poor astronaut. Something bad happened. She should have read the manuals. You can also see we have added a black video at the bottom, just so that the overlays we are going to use have always something to get overlaid upon, even if there's no stock footage below them. Let's just go ahead and level the videos to make some space, and keep the timeline clean and organised. For the intended look, we're going to import a frame from our 8mm 4K textures bundle. It will go well with the VHS overlays. Drag and place it on top. You may have to rescale it since it's 4K, and set it to multiply. Now we end up having these sort of bars on either side. We may have to reframe some of these videos. Let's do that real quick. We don't want any video to be way off center. A few minutes later. Now make a copy. Hold Alt and drag. Place it above and nest it. We can call it displaced. Now the main part. We're going to import our retro VHS overlays. We can try functions, we can try textures. For now, let's just import these three folders. Inside we have plenty of options to choose from. We're going to choose normal three from textures, perhaps from this point. Place it above the nested layer like this. Go to Effects, look for Track Matte Key, drop it on Nested Layer. We're going to tell this to use Video Layer 4 as a mat, and composite it using its Luma values. Also we're going to drop Brightness and Contrast onto the VHS overlay. I know what you're thinking. Some of you who have watched our previous tutorial must be having deja vu. Well I can tell you that the application here is different. The technique is somewhat similar though. Set the contrast to 98. And now you say, well what's going on? Where are the glitches that you were blabbering on about? Well, they are actually right here. If we just turn off the base layer, we can see the Luma mat working. If we turn off the nested layer, we can see the video visible wherever we have a Luma value. The reason that we're not able to see it is that it's not standing out against the backdrop of base layer videos. And the reason it's not standing out is that we haven't displaced it yet. So go inside the nested layer. Select that video, and we're going to do some random readjustments. Anything that can reposition the video, like this. Now back at main sequence, we can see the displacement. For our next shot, we're going to be using RGB2. This part right here looks nice. Drag and drop. Paste the brightness and contrast from the previous one. It's working fine except for this part here. We need to displace the rest of the videos inside the nested layer. We don't necessarily have to be very specific. We're going to repeat this procedure on other parts of the sequence. It'll take a moment, bear with me. <laughs> so, it's working fine now. Now on to our next shot. This time we're picking up one from Transitions. 
Transition 3. Drag and drop. Copy brightness and contrast from the previous one. Not bad. We can make it better. If I just go inside the nest and displace it further. Yeah, it's much better. Now for the next one. Maybe here. We're going to choose Transition 4. And just like before, copying brightness and contrast from the previous one. Maybe change some brightness this time. Try to find the right instance of the overlay. Just play around for a while. Nice. Moving on. Next spot. Here perhaps. Let's just use Transition 4 again. Copying brightness and contrast from the previous one. Maybe decrease the brightness a little. It's looking great. It's amplifying the shot. And now, for this last part, we can use one from Functions. We are going to pick Stop. Drag and drop and place it right there. We won't be finding any noticeable displacement here, because it's just a black space at the bottom. So, let's move it up from Video Layer 4 and use this as a regular overlay. Blend mode lighten should be fine. And maybe we can play around with the blue one here. Stop 2. Looks good. Why not add one function overlay at the beginning as well? Play. Lighten it. To sell this effect, consider adding some chromatic aberrations as well. Make an adjustment layer. Place it on top of the VHS layers. Crop it accordingly. Go to Effects. Type Chromatic Aberration, drag and drop. You can play around with some of the settings. We can increase the fall off here so that the aberrations can be a bit smoother. Duplicate it over the other VHS overlays as well. You can see this sort of RGB split effect caused by the aberration. We're going to repeat this procedure on other parts of the sequence. One eternity later. Actually, we can change the arrangement here. Help keep things sorted. Now the next step is optional, but it will help sell the effect and could potentially make a lot of difference. We're going to use some film burns from our 8mm 4K textures. Let's use this here, at this part. Let's try soft light. Or maybe screen. You can see how beautifully it aided in the transition. Makes it look a lot more organic.
and the other one at the end. Oops, won't work with video layer 4 because the track mat effect. Anything on video layer 4 should be used as a mat. Let's move it up to layer 5. It's 4K, so make sure to adjust the scale, depending on your sequence settings. Choose an appropriate blending mode. Try to adjust it so that this bright flash can complement the scene. Perfect. We can add another VHS overlay. A subtle one from the textures. Literally. Set the scale right and choose the appropriate blending mode. Now lastly, to glue it all together, we're going to drop a 16mm grain layer from our 16mm Pro 4K texture. In this case, a coarse grain perhaps. Again, drag and place it and set the scale. Choose Blending Mode. Sweet! So this is how we can effectively create glitch effects using a displacement map workaround within Premiere Pro, without needing to go over to After Effects. If you're serious about levelling up your post-production game, check out our high-end retro VHS overlays pack and other premium assets. Subscribe to level up your filmmaking game and follow us on Instagram at Filmblade to stay updated. That's it for now, until next time.